Anti-foul done. Yep. Polishing done. Seacox tried to do ourselves. Stuffed it up royally. She was supposed to go in the water tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. Morning. We're giving him the boat a polish today. There he is. Looking good, babe. Yeah. I should be helping him. <laughs> he just said wax on, wax off. Classic. Um, right, I'm going to go down and help him. So we've decided since the boat is out of the water for another two days that we should probably service the seacocks. Now if you go back two months ago, neither of us knew what a seacock was, but we've since discovered <laughs> that it is a through hull fitting and it is all of the all of the water or poo holes or discharges from the boat. <laughs> Very eloquently put, Jackson. <laughs> so, basically, anything that is going to sink a boat, the biggest problem is a hole in the boat. And we have six of them, which need to be serviced to make sure that they don't shit themselves and end up sinking our boat. So, the professional seacock servicer is not available for two weeks. In which case, we need to get the boat back in the water in two days. So we're going to service them ourselves. Now, after doing a bit of research online, it would appear that the best way to service a seacock is to get a stick and put grease on the end of it, on like the end of a brush or something. And you have to stand outside with the mm -hmm. seacock and you have to put the stick up there so the grease is touching the valve and then one of us has to turn the valve inside and spread the grease on there. Oh, wow. So you're gonna have to stand outside. Oh, 
you know, just trying to work out what's the best colour to write the word Avalon with. We're thinking this shiny one. It's pretty lit. What do you think? Oh, here comes the captain. <laughs> yes, fair weather's today. Fair weather's. Hello, boat ho. Kaki, boat ho. Who are you talking to? There's no one there. What? We've brought our dinner to the beach because it's been a very big four days and we just needed some zen time. We've seriously been just so desperate to get sailing. So we've been trying to complete all the jobs that we need to do to enable us to do that. Currently, as you've seen, the boat is in the sky rather than in the water. So there's six things that we needed to complete before we could get sailing. And that's um, applying the anti-foul, giving her a good polish and servicing the sea cocks, sorting out the navigation Transducers. Transducers and getting her registered under the Australian flag. Anti foul done. Yep. Polishing done. Seacocks tried to do ourselves, stuffed it up royally. She was supposed to go in the water tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. So. Yeah, I made a little bit of a mistake <laughs> under some false guidance. I was told that. The strainer on the engine cooling intake could just be popped off and that it was just a cap that was siliconed on and it turns out that, that strainer was a complete part of the whole seacock so as I was trying to pry it off Hacking away. He's a screwdriver. He was, he was hacking away for After a hours good... on end. <laughs> yeah. Through, uh, through the evening. After a good lump of time, I sort of came to the realisation that it was definitely not just silicon dawn. And after a very closer inspection, realised that I'd probably damaged the whole thing. So... It wasn't a good feeling. No, it definitely put me in a bad <laughs> mood, uh, knowing that I had just damaged the boat. This is how we got to this situation. We asked our boat broker whether we could get the seacock serviced, because we wanted to anyway. And he said, yeah, sure, but um, no one's available till two weeks time. We were like, oh, we can't wait that long. We want to get sailing. So we thought, let's cut them out and do it ourselves. Well, he was going to get them to replace the seacocks which could yeah. be done for two weeks. Exactly. So instead we thought we'd service the seacocks and simply grease them up yeah. to make sure that they were all in good working order. So then we got to this situation, we thought, oh God, we've got to wait two weeks for the seacockmen to come and sort it out for us. We're definitely not sailing for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and so we called Mr. Seacock <laughs> and his apprentice and they came and uh, assessed the boat and it turns out that the engine intake seacock, which I had damaged, was already royally corroded anyway and desperately needed to be replaced. So that was a semi blessing in disguise. Blessing in disguise. And at the same time, we decided that we may as well get all of them done. Yeah. And just have the peace of mind that they're all finished and freshly replaced. So. The first price in the morning was 1300 euros and by the afternoon we'd got them down to 700 euros. So look, a bit of an investigation and walking around the marina and talking to a few other people. They've done a sneaky on us. Uh, Tried to pull the wool over our eyes. All hull work and out of water work. <laughs> Shall be done. Dry dock work is done. Shall be done and the boat should be in the water on Thursday. We've actually arranged that, so. Mm. But there's still a couple more steps, if you remember. So step number four and five. 
sorted number five today. A lovely man called David came and kept us company all day yeah. <laughs> installing the nav gear. Yeah. We were going to do ourselves, but we're glad that we didn't do that now. My apologies, Ruffy, for all the time <laughs> you spent. <laughs> putting teach, sticky labels putting, on <laughs> putting sticky labels on everything telling me how to put it together um, yeah look as soon as we opened up the boat and actually got and looked at all the electronics in there uh, it was definitely a bit of a minefield it looks like spaghetti land in there and, uh, might look normal to you Ralph but not to the untrained eye <laughs> and uh, yeah so anyway it was quite a nice day being a marine electrician's apprentice for the day mm -hmm. And he was really great. David was awesome and basically taught me everything that we had to do and took us step by step. So the good news is we now have our new chart plotter uh, with all the Navionics installed. We have our AIS system, which is great with the new GPS connection uh, and all our old SeaTalk 1 instruments, our wind, autopilot and tri-data are all feeding back into our new display. Very tidy. So then the final piece in the puzzle of getting us sailing is the Blimmin' Australian Registration. Yeah. Just when we thought we had it done this week, but we thought we thought we were registered, we thought we actually had it, we just didn't have the physical papers. Found out we had to post one more thing. It's a real pain in the ass mm. because, of course, now being in Croatia, it's going to take another seven days to post that form back, of which then they will send us the final papers. And we want to give you all the tips on getting registered to the Australian flag but really there's not much to it is there it, it was pretty straightforward all the instructions are really neatly laid out on the website on RMS no not RMS well you did it so. they're all <laughs> they're all why don't you tell everyone all the steps step number one over to you <laughs> I didn't do any of it <laughs> look I don't know if this look it is all laid out on the website but for a first timer it has been hard work trying to get the boat registered, um, trying to fill out all the forms and get all the information together. And my God, it's hard work trying to do it from the other side of the world, especially when you boat and things like getting deletion certificates. You know, we've been delayed for four weeks waiting for the Port Authority to delete our boat out of the Croatian register and then et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, we might do a little separate video on registration. And there have been a couple of complications coming with the registration as well. It's meant that we actually can't call our boat Avalon. <laughs> so the boat's going to be called Finding Avalon, just like we are. So you get three options. It's like applying for university. Put your first, second, and third option. Finding Avalon was our third option. So that's what she's going to be called. And then the final piece of the major puzzle is getting the engine realigned because one of the problems with our boat was that she's had a new engine installed a year ago and it was installed on the wrong engine mounts so there was quite excessive vibration so as part of the purchase agreement uh, the owner has replaced the engine mounts replaced the rear seal or the shaft seal sorry and now needs to realign the engine and we need to get our surveyor back to check her all off you would have seen all of this at the beginning of this in episode three so in essence we should be sailing in just over a week oh, maybe more yeah 10 days 10 days yeah beautiful place to be stranded i mean <laughs> we're living on our boat in the dry dock and we get to go down to places like this mm -hmm. to hang out and we're about to take you to a really cool cave 